Good morning. Welcome to our worship service today. Good to have you as we worship together on this, the second Sunday after the Epiphany. The color has gone back to green again, which is the color of life and growth. And the season of Epiphany, like the season of Pentecost, that is the featured color, the color green, meaning we'll use the shorter creed again, the Apostles' Creed. But one thing that distinguishes, at least in this church, and it's a good thing, that distinguishes the long Pentecost season you know, during the summer, when the color's green from the season of Epiphany, is the star that you have up there. So we definitely are in the Epiphany season. Epiphany refers to Jesus' revelation of his true identity to all the world. And we know that Jesus brings light into the world, and that's a key theme for, for this season, light. Remember, Jesus is the light of the world. As we learn in John's Gospel, Jesus brings light, Jesus brings truth. And so we celebrate that, magnify it, extol it during the season of Epiphany. Just very briefly, there was quite a contrast on Epiphany Day, right? Which is a day of, uh, again, of Jesus', Jesus identity being made known to the world. Jesus is the light of the world. Quite a contrast between that Epiphany and what happened on Epiphany Day at the Capitol. Suffice it to say that what happened there we could call an anti-Epiphany. So... But we continue to worship together during this wonderful season of the church year. Good Samaritan Fund. I wanted to mention with that fund that it's a very important fund here at the church, a fund that we use to help people in need. And, and it's one that is um, supported through the giving of folks like yourselves, the membership. So if you would like to donate to the Good Samaritan Fund, simply earmark a check with Good Samaritan Fund on it or have that on the envelope. But any help you want to give that way will be great to bolster this particular account at the church, a benevolence account to be sure. Do check your bulletins for further announcements that have been posted there. And I now invite you to rise in confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you, given ourselves into the power of sin. We really sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 
let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the lessons. A reading from 1 Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am. And ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. The word of the Lord.
portions of Psalm 139 read responsively. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! A reading from 1 Corinthians. All things are lawful, lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body. But the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God? and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. This is the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. And let us pray. 
Lord God, you are the light of the world. You bring truth. And you bless us by calling us and moving us to be your disciples. May we be faithful in sharing your light with others. Amen. In the first chapter of John's Gospel, what we see going on here is that Jesus is calling disciples. He's just called Andrew and his brother Simon Peter. And now in our text, we see the calling of Philip and Nathaniel. And Jesus calls, Jesus beckons with those two words, but very powerful words, follow me. In the sacrament of baptism, Jesus calls us, follow me. Like Andrew, Peter, Philip, and Nathaniel, we may wonder where he's taking us. Well, he's taking us to a number of places for the sake of the world. And it is true that some Christians are able to maybe affect more people, get their word, their witness out to many more people than others are able to do. We think here of Martin Luther and think of the holiday tomorrow, Martin Luther King Jr. All the people that they touched and continue to touch. Many of us, most of us don't touch so many people, but we're all blessed with a life in our Lord's earthly kingdom where we can make an impact, can affect others, can give a witness. And what a blessing it is to be able to do that. So continue to share the faith through your words and deeds as you carry on in our Lord's service. And you carry on to eternal life. Knowing, believing, trusting, and life everlasting moves us to be ever more eager, joyful, and faithful servants during our earthly pilgrimage. Now, Nathaniel himself was concerned about a place. But the point is, Jesus is the place where we meet God. We follow in obedience. As Dietrich Bonhoeffer put it, we follow our Lord even when we're not sure where he's leading us. But knowing, again trusting, that he is the place, that he is with us. In Holy Communion, where we receive our Lord's body and blood in, with, and under the bread and wine, is an incredibly enriching experience for us where once again we receive God's forgiveness, God's guidance, God's nourishment, God's grace to continue on our Christian walk. Now note the interaction here in our lesson between Jesus and Nathaniel. Nathaniel judges by appearances. Hey, I prefer Cana to Nazareth. <laughs> but he perseveres unlike others who only judge by appearances. Jesus honors Nathanael, setting him apart from those who judge falsely. Let's look at Nathanael for a minute. He's a very real person, like you and me. He's devout, cautious, a bit stubborn, and very curious. And the last three of those traits led him to make that kind of famous type of an expression, can anything good come out of Nazareth? People have said that through the ages, right? Can anything good come out of Philadelphia? <laughs> so that I'm not just picking on the eastern side of the state. Can anything good come out of Pittsburgh? Well, I did. <laughs> and Bill Roberts did. <laughs> and good people and things come out of Philly too, to be sure. Yet despite this comment, this question on Nathaniel's part, Jesus gives him the promise of witness 
to the final glory of revelation at the close of the ages. And Nathaniel then is moved to make a classic confessional statement as Thomas will do near the end of this gospel. Here Nathaniel says to Jesus, you are the son of God, you are the king of Israel. Now, as I said in regard to Mary, the mother of our Lord, and John the Baptist during the season of Advent, some say weren't people like Philip and Nathaniel blessed to be called by Jesus to follow him? And of course, yes, they were very blessed, extremely blessed. But remember the consequences for them, for the four people that were talking about today all died as martyrs. But the truth is, when you think about how incredible that calling would be, the truth is we're also blessed as we're called and moved to come and see. And in all probability none of us will meet a martyr's death for our faith here in this nave today. Now it may be true that in all probability we're not going to see Jesus in the flesh today. But we're still just as much invited to come and see our Lord. And that you're continuing to do even during this pandemic. Those who are taking the services in online are continuing to do. And I look forward to that day when we can once again just really open up the place in the post-COVID world, of course. And to give you something to look forward to, even though some of these things are already happening on a lower ebb, I'm going to lift up some things that you can come and see when that day arrives, when you're here without your masks. And many, many more brothers and sisters in Christ are here. And all kinds of things are going on through Redeemer as they typically are. Then come and see him. Come and see Jesus here in word and sacrament. Come and see him here in music and drama ministry. Come and see him here in Christian education programs. Come and see him here in social ministry outreach. Come and see him here in fellowship events. Like me, you probably miss those right now. Come and see him here in evangelical witness. Come and see him here as our dollars repair and enhance this house of God. Right now we have a marvelous opportunity to do just that through the audio-visual system that we have a drive for right now so that we can greatly enhance, improve, and develop it. That will be a tremendous asset to this congregation right here at the hub of where we meet in the sanctuary. And come and see him here as the Holy Spirit works to strengthen our families. You know, our Lord who called the first disciples to follow him, you know, to come and see, stayed with them, empowering and equipping them to do his work. Good news? He empowers and equips us to do his work today as he stays with us. He blesses us with gifts. Think of the time, talents, and treasures that you have. Use them individually and together to support God's work in the world. Remembering through it all that he is always with us. Remember Hebrews 13 verse 5, words of God echoed from the Old Testament. I will never leave you or forsake you. It's out of the question. Yes. May Redeemer, may you and I, as long as I am with you here, follow Jesus as there is a lot that will come and see this very year. Indeed, at some point in this year, I predict you will be seeing your new, hopefully, long-term pastor. And that will be a great blessing indeed. Come and see our Lord Jesus Christ here in our ministry, empowering us for mission. Come and see 
Maybe that can be a logo for Redeemer in 2021. Amen.
And now I invite you to rise and we'll confess our faith in God by using the words of the Apostles' Creed as found in the bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the body of Christ gathered throughout the world and for all servants of the gospel, that following Jesus, the church lives out its calling every day. Let us pray. Have mercy, Lord. For the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, and for all that God has marvelously made, that we serve as wide stewards of earth, our home. Let us pray. For police officers and firefighters, for attorneys and paralegals, for peacekeepers and military personnel, and for the leaders of governments, that they provide protection to all people, especially the most vulnerable. And Lord, we pray for protection for all people this coming Wednesday for the inauguration, that it be a safe and peaceful event and transition of power. Let us pray. For those lacking food or shelter, for those who are sick or grieving, and for those who are imprisoned or homebound, especially Elias Sintron, Bill Dangro Sr., Tim Ditzler, Bonnie Goshen, Don Leonard, David Royer, Diane Sick, Ron and Cindy Snyder, Jim Weaver, and all that we now lift up to you, Lord, either out loud or in our hearts. That God console all who suffer, let us pray. For our neighborhood, for visitors joining us for the first time or returning, either here in person or online, and for those absent from our assembly, that all who seek to know God are nourished by word and sacrament, let us pray. And thanksgiving for the saints who have gone before us, that their lives give us a vision of the gospel in action, let us pray. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. And now I direct your attention to the communion packets to have them ready. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. You are the life and light of all. By your powerful word you created all things. Through the prophets you called your people to be a light to the nations. Blessed are you for Jesus, your Son. He is your light, shining in our darkness and revealing to us your mercy and might. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his preaching and healing, his dying and rising, and his promise to come again, we await that day when all the universe will rejoice in your holy and life-giving light. By your Spirit, bless us in this meal, that, refreshed with the heavenly food, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours. Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. And now I invite you to open the communion packet, the top clear layer, and receive the bread. The body of Christ given for you. And now we open the second layer. The blood of Christ shed for you. And now I invite you to rise for the conclusion of the service. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. We give you thanks almighty God that you've refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, bless you, defend you from all evil, and bring you to everlasting life. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks.